Good afternoon and welcome to Open Networking Summit Europe. This is the first one in Europe that we are doing. And it's, it's again, remember, ONS is by the community, for the community. And it is for not just the business audience, but the technical audience like you guys that cover cloud, enterprise, and telecommunications. So really excited that you have joined us. Uh, before we get started, let's go through some of the housekeeping. First of all, really big thank you to our sponsors. Uh, you know, as, as you can see from, from here, you know, without their support, we cannot do it. A special thanks to our diamond sponsor, Intel, uh, as well as uh, you know, our, our uh, sponsors uh, that, that you, you, know, you know these names, Huawei and Red Hat, right? Big time uh, platinum sponsors. So thank you. Please give a big round of applause to, to all the sponsors. Thank you. A couple of other housekeeping notes. Uh, the content has come to you from this program committee. And you may recognize some of these active folks from the, uh, from the uh, committees you are on. But they had a 4x oversubscription on the submitted talks. So they have picked from the best of the submissions. And they've done a fantastic job. I guarantee you that if you attend, not if, when you attend the sessions, you will be pleasantly surprised and really, really happy that you, know, you participated in it. So again, big round of applause for the program committee. Thank you. Uh, on a couple of other things, there's a schedule for ONS. So please download the apps and make sure that it is on your phone. Uh, along with that, you have a couple of other things like the networking app that connects each other uh, in the event in real time. So download this app. And then finally, you know, make sure you fill out a survey. This is extremely important. An email will come in. This feedback is how we get better at these events. Okay? So that's kind of the housekeeping. And what I would like to do now is kind of walk you through uh, a journey uh, of, of, of networking and kind of walk you through you know, where we have come. But before I do that, it's always great to see how far we have come. And you know, effectively, we have a lot of uh, you guys in the audience that have been with us since day one. But what I'd like to do next is show you some of the early open networking summits and where it's all started in you know, Stanford and Silicon Valley. So can we roll the videos, please? We can bring new software, new capabilities, new services to market more quickly. It turns out there are more than 600 people interested in participating in the summit. There are more than 200 people wanting to attend the tutorials. And there were more than 25 companies and organizations that wanted to do the demos. So that's pretty exciting. You can see that the demand has been like significantly high from day one. And we have been you know, at it for the last eight plus years. So today, what I want to do is you know, walk you through this journey of what I call open sourceification and uh, networking and how we are enabling you know, the next wave of what we're calling CNFs, or Cloud Native Network Functions. Uh, so what I'll be covering is you know, the last 142 years of the networking industry. Now, I don't remember all the things from the past, but in just the last five years, what we have done is extremely significant. So the three takeaways for us as an industry is, number one, the power of open and harmonized communities drives innovation and creates value. And we all know that, and it has been significant over the last couple of years. So we'll talk about that today. We'll talk about how networking impacts adjacent areas, adjacent markets, adjacent communities. And, and it's shaping the cloud, the edge, the IoT, deep learning, AI, access you know, complete areas adjacent to networking and how we are shaping it. 
And finally, you know, we'll talk about the journey to cloud native and how uh, one of the industries, you know, telecommunications is embarking on that. So let's begin with the fact that the power of collaboration and harmonization is what drives us and what motivates here at the Linux Foundation. We started this a year and a half ago by calling it Harmonization 1.0. You know, it's open collaboration, open communities, open standards, and open source, right? So we're not talking about, you know, or. We're talking about the power of and, open source and open standards. You know, we announced partnerships with MEF, TM Forum, right? We've announced at Plugfest. Tremendous amount of support from the standards community. And, and these harmonized efforts and these collective efforts have resulted in an amazing, amazing uh, trillion dollar industry push. So thank you very much for doing that. But let's see, you know, what is happening. Networking is becoming the fabric of innovation across industries. Whether it's the automotive industries and the connected cars, whether it's retail industries and the connected stores, whether it's energy and connected homes, and my favorite, you know, agriculture and connected cows. Independent of all that, you know, we're talking about carriers, cloud, and enterprise networking playing a major role in this trillion dollar industry. Okay? And we're humbled and honored to host a lot of these innovation at the Linux Foundation. We're hosting over 21 projects. Nine of the most, uh, nine of the 10 most important projects are with Linux Foundation networking. Uh, the best part is it's supported by the top vendors, all, the, all of them, plus a huge delegation of end users, right? And here we're showing an example that almost 70% of the mobile global subscribers are represented by companies participating, all right? That's kind of over 3 billion connections. And collectively, we have created value, value in terms of dollars, almost 500 plus million dollars of innovation and R&D. You know, try asking your GM for that much fun to create software. It's not going to happen. That's the power of collective innovation. And uh, value in terms of end user innovation, service creation. So really excited about this. And we're not the only one sort of trying to say that. We have, you know, the media and analysts supporting us. Um, here you're showing, uh, you know, uh, an article from Forbes that says LF is changing the fabric of networking. So, we're, you know, here, you know, the, whether the fabric is SDN, NFV, orchestration, virtualization, automation, cloud native, doesn't matter. But when you see end users, in this case, Orange, issuing RFPs that mandate you know, future RFPs that mandate um, open source and projects like ONAP, you can see the entire journey and the entire cycle come through. So we're really excited that, you know, some of the leading media is, is picking this up. And then, obviously, the analysts are putting out surveys. So, you know, we just announced this survey uh, from our to-do group that essentially says where, which industries are really going to utilize the power of open source to change their digital transformation. And the top three, no surprises, the web techs, the telecom, and fintechs. And over 72% of the companies there in these verticals are going to rely on open source. So if you're going to focus your energy and effort, these are the areas on, 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 on changing the way uh, these industries build for future. Today, we are also announcing a new survey that came out in our space in networking from Heavy Reading. And these are just some examples of, of, of the survey. Please download the whole survey. But what we are announcing is uh, there are motivators for open source networking, whether it's uh, cost savings, whether it's innovation, whether it's uh, vendor lock-in or interoperability, right? No surprises. But the thing that impresses and you know, uh, surprises me the most is the the open source networking is prevalent all the way from CPE to the core, all the layers of the network. And, and, and this is kind of the next big phase of where we are heading. So you know, do download this survey, and you know, we're really excited about that. Uh, another announcement that just happened today is about milestones that 
we have, uh, our projects have been uh, passing through. The first one is the LF networking compliance and verification program is now expanded. It includes ONAP as well as VNF certification. And we're really excited about that as we build this program out with a bunch of VNF vendors as well as system vendors to make it very easy for the end users to integrate VNFs into their network. And obviously, projects are the lifeblood of, of, of LF networking, and we have projects like ONAP showing very fancy cross-domain and cross-cloud uh, connectivity. You know, there will be a keynote on this tomorrow. Uh, Tungsten Fabric coming up with their release. Fido coming up. Open Daylight coming up with their latest release. So lots of good progress on, on our projects. And, and, and so that's kind of the first version of the harmonized uh, ecosystem. The second part, which I want to sort of introduce, is that networking is shaping adjacent communities. Cloud Edge AI, IoT, access. No adjacent community is left alone. And here in the diagram, you can see it's a telco-centric view, but it is very common for cloud and enterprise as well. And you know, projects are really shaping up to move from core now to the edge and access. So the announcement uh, we're going to make uh, tomorrow, and uh, you know, here's a sneak peek at some of this, is what are the applications at the edge that are driving this innovation? Because nobody has a good handle on that. And we did a, uh, IHS did a survey on this, and Michael Howard will talk about the entire survey. But the results are very promising, right? History is repeating itself. The video of all kinds and things that are connected are the killer apps. Okay? And we'll talk about this over the next uh, three days. So that's kind of adjacent industries. And then the last thing I want to cover here is this journey is now continuing into the cloud. And we have the best of both worlds coming together. I wouldn't say colliding, coming together. So in the cloud world, we're learning you know, portability. We're learning you know, effectiveness. We're learning cloud native. We're learning containerization, microservices. In the telecom world, we're learning uh, virtualization, uh, VNFs, uh, high availability, carrier grade. And we are bringing both of these together. So in order to help me out on this one, I'd like to bring on stage the executive director of uh, CNCF, Dan Khan. Hey, thanks, Arpit. Thank you, Dan. And uh, what we'd like to do is collectively here uh, make a simple announcement, but it is a very critical announcement that two fastest growing open source communities, CNCF and LF Networking, are coming together to bring the cloud native journey to telecom. And who better to talk about this <laughs> than Dan? So walk us through you know, cloud native and uh, CNFs and how we can take care of that. Great. Thank you very much, Arpit. And I really appreciate you uh, donating five minutes of your keynote uh, to me. Uh, I'm going to just uh, try and answer this question of what is cloud native and uh, why you should care. And uh, as Arpit said, I run the sister organization to LF Networking, which is uh, the Cloud Native Computing Foundation. Um, CNF hosts Kubernetes. Kubernetes is popular. It has more than 4,500 unique authors, more than 23,000 people who've commented on it uh, to help improve it. It's the second fastest development velocity open source project in history, number two only to Linux. So um, this is a look at search traffic. We um, uh, the very first commit to Kubernetes was just four years ago, and it's now uh, dramatically outpaced all the alternatives. Uh, when you look at CNCF, we have an end user community with 61 companies there, uh, some amazing organizations like Bloomberg, Wikipedia, eBay, and the New York Times. We have 61 certified uh, Kubernetes service providers. These are companies that can help end users. And we have 71 certified Kubernetes partners. These are organizations whose products have passed Kubernetes rigorous conformance tests. Uh, up from 500 people at our first event three years ago, 
we had 4,300 people attend KubeCon, Cloud Native Con in Copenhagen a few months ago, and are expecting more than 7,000 in Seattle in December. So um, this is uh, the keynote stage from KubeCon, Cloud Native Con Berlin a year and a half ago. And uh, note that we'll be back in Europe again in Barcelona in May 2019. Um, so let's zoom in on those words behind the speaker. Uh, co orchestration, containerization, microservices. These three words are a simple definition of cloud native. Now, the CNCF community came together to agree on a more detailed definition, but I'll warn you, it's five very dense sentences. I'm not going to read it all to you, uh, but if you just type CNCF dot io slash d into your phone, you can see the full definition yourself, actually in both English and Chinese. But uh, some of the just key phrases that jump out from it, public, private, and hybrid clouds. So a key idea is that it's not just about the public cloud. You can actually use all of these technologies in your own data center. And then even more powerfully, you can move your workloads from your own bare metal data center up into the public cloud and back and forth. Uh, service meshes is a key technology, uh, loosely coupled systems, robust automation, high impact changes, uh, that we have an ecosystem of open source vendor neutral projects, and we're trying to democratize state of the art patterns. Okay, but this is a networking conference. What does any of this have to do with networking? So, um, I uh, worked for the telecoms mogul Craig McCaw 20 years ago, and uh, at the time, network architecture looked a lot like this. You had uh, physical boxes for every component, routers, switches, firewalls, etc. cetera. Um, but today, most network architectures look like this, uh, a modern data center, uh, network architecture 2.0. And so now those physical boxes have been converted to virtual machines called virtual network functions, or VNFs, and they often run on VMware or OpenStack. So what ARPIT and I and our, our communities are collaborating on is the network architecture 3.0. And it looks like identical to the 2.0, actually. The hardware is uh, exactly the same. But the software is what we're evolving. So uh, we're looking at cloud-native network functions, CNFs, that run on Kubernetes on public, private, or hybrid clouds. Um, so let's look at that software stack. Uh, this is a networking conference, and block diagrams are the kind of uh, the coin of the realm. So um, for ONAP Amsterdam, you, uh, it could run on OpenStack or VMware or Azure or Rackspace. But with uh, Beijing, you can run on top of Kubernetes, which means that it can run either on bare metal or on any cloud. And then uh, moving into the future, we think more and more of those network functions are going to become CNFs, uh, cloud-native network functions. And then for the small number that haven't been ported yet, the existing VNFs can actually run on top of systems like KubeVirt, but still be controlled by Kubernetes. Kubernetes becomes that uh, consistent orchestration layer underlying uh, all the software and sitting on top of either bare metal or a cloud. So why bother? Why are people excited about this? Three major benefits. Uh, definitely cost savings. So when you look at a lot of enterprises today, they're able to run the same applications that they did before on 25 or 50% less hardware. Or, of course, on the existing hardware, they can just run more applications. Two, improved resiliency. So individual uh, containers can fail, machines, even data centers. The cloud-native architecture is much more dynamic, uh, much more resilient, and also supports auto-scaling uh, in order to match the, the supply to the, the current demand. But really, the most important benefit, we think, is a higher development velocity, where this dynamic architecture encourages you to move from quarterly or maybe monthly updates to daily or even dozens of times per day. And that means that your bugs get fixed faster, that new features get rolled out where they can benefit customers, and allows you to keep up with your competition. 
Okay, but there are still real problems, and the fundamental one is that moving the network functionality from physical hardware to encapsulating the software in a virtual machine, or P2V, was generally easier than containerizing the software, P to C or V to C. And that's because many VNFs rely on kernel hacks uh, or otherwise don't restrict themselves to just the Linux user space ABI. Now, there are some real solutions to that, including uh, the teams here working on FDIO to provide much faster packet processing, other ways of following the rules of the user space ABI to ensure that portability. But there's substantial work um, that we absolutely do need to do. Uh, CNCF is the home of Kubernetes. We also have 17 other projects, including uh, Rook, a distributed storage project that's going to be uh, moving into incubation today, and uh, a number of sandbox projects. And as you're trying to get to know this space, I do recommend taking a look at our cloud native trail map. Uh, we have handouts of this at the CNCF booth here at the conference. It's also uh, available at l.cncf.io. This is our kind of recommended path through the cloud native landscape. And it can be helpful because the landscape can be really overwhelming. This is the over 500 open source projects and uh, closed source products uh, in this ecosystem. And uh, if you do want to learn more, you can take a look at l.cncf.io. And uh, that whole page and app and everything is uh, installs on your phone or your laptop, and you can play with it. Um, so besides this event and uh, coming again in San Jose in the spring, the best place to learn uh, more about CNFs is to come to KubeCon Cloud Native Con. We're going to be in Shanghai in November, in Seattle in December, and then back in Europe in Barcelona in May. And we'd love to see many of you and your colleagues there. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Arpin. Thank you, Dan. Uh, g give me a second. Sure. So, so let me ask you this. How can the audience get involved in this journey? Absolutely, and there's uh, kind of a lot of different threads to it, so there's not one answer. Uh, three that I would look at is um, we've been collaborating on uh, continuous integration, which is one of the biggest areas of cloud native, cncf.ci, where we have ONAP running on a number of different uh, public clouds. I would look at a network service mesh, which you can Google, and there's uh, a lot of interesting work there, and then ONAP multivim. Uh, going on in the ONET project. Very good. Thank yeah. you. Thanks, Thanks so much for, that. for having me. Thank you.